Wende Mbele NCBA Go for it Gentle breeze blowing right across uh, the capital city of Nairobi, Kenya. A warm welcome to Prime Edition Live from Broadcasting House. Hello from wherever you're watching us. My name is Tom Boya with the news and it begins right now. The National Treasury uh, last week disbursed 10 billion shillings. Government is encouraging counties to try and reallocate some of these funds uh, to the dire situation now uh, occasioned by these floods. Work with what you have. Government's directive to governors over the El Nino budget. KCPE exam debacle. Parents move to court. Will there be repeat marking of papers? 11 state agencies picked to start the privatization of parastatals program. Anne Wangesh is in charge of our sign language docket, our socials at KBC Channel One. Many thanks once again indeed for joining us. Let us begin this live broadcast with our lead story. And county governments will now be forced to readjust their budgets and set aside an emergency kitty from their own shareable revenue fund so as to address the effects of the ongoing El Nino rains. According to the State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed, 10 billion shillings have been disbursed to counties and another equal amount will be disbursed at the end of the week. Moreover, today's cabinet meeting resolved to form an ad hoc committee to be led by Deputy President Rigade Kashagwa. That report opens our coverage tonight. It is now a moment of truth for the county government. A State House spokesperson Hussein Mohammed on Monday said the devolved units will have to set aside monies to cater for the Nino effects from the disbursed county shareable revenue. Hussein insisted that a total of 10 billion Kenyan shillings had already been sent to counties and another 10 billion Kenyan shillings would be due by the end of this week. Government is encouraging counties to try and reallocate some of these funds uh, to the dire situation now. Uh, occasioned by these floods. State House spokesperson, however, said the state had allocated 7 billion shillings to address the plight of Kenyans across the country. The funds were appropriated by Parliament and the Contingencies Fund as part of the 2023-2024 financial year budget and supplementary appropriations number one of the same financial year. Today's cabinet meeting also resolved to form an ad hoc committee to respond to El Nino emergencies under the leadership of Deputy President Rigadi Gashagwa. The cabinet also committed the coordination of all state efforts to the National Disaster Operations Center, which will coordinate all relief activities by activating the whole of government approach, thus ensuring efficient deployment of resources and enhanced communication. <laughs> According to the State House, 76 people have died while the 5,000 households have been displaced. Further, a total of 38 counties have been placed on the alarm stage. They include Isiolo, where displaced persons in Garemara Ward are appealing to humanitarian organizations to complement the county government's efforts to alleviating their suffering. In Garissa County, the Kenyan National Highways Authority on Sunday night closed the Modogo Garissa stretch after floods cut through the road, making it impossible for residents and motorists. 
Ongoing works to be completed by tomorrow, Tuesday 28th, include repairs at Malim, Tokbub on the Nuno Morugashi Road, and Kotulo, uh, Mandera on the Wajiri Mandera Road. The works in, pro in progress include uh, Tula on the Thika uh, Garissa Road, a red on the Thika Garissa Road also, and Moyale to Ramu Road in Mandera. Motorists and other road users plying the Kangeta Lare Highway in Meru County are being advised to seek alternative routes after the highway was cut off by debris following last night's heavy downpour. Give us minor prime edition. On to Alana Oko's report of thinking up new things and the government is accelerating the commercialization of research and innovation in the country. President William Ruto said that the provision of incentives and the scaling up of funding in innovation will expand opportunities for the youth. President Ruto, while officially opening this year's Kenya Innovation Week, said that the government is also in the process of establishing startup laws to support and de risk innovations. Here's that report. Commercialization of research is expected to promote the achievement of innovation, value creation and competitive advantage. Speaking during the official opening of the 2023 Kenya Innovation Week, President Ruto said the government is facilitating access to quality infrastructure, financing and training for youth to enhance inclusivity in innovation. Our programs to establish and accelerate the commercialization of research has accordingly taken off with the establishment of the network of entrepreneurial institutions of learning, providing a bold signal of our intent in this respect. He says the youth play a pivotal role in driving innovation, citing that youth-driven startups secured 700 million US dollars last year, positioning Kenya as a leading investment hub in Africa. Based on this, President Ruto says the government is promoting the innovative mindset from an early age through their competence-based curriculum. In economic transformation, it is important to scale up our funding for the commercialization of innovation to reflect our commitment. We are therefore taking measures to enhance the funding of our national innovation agenda from 0.8% of our GDP to 2% of our GDP. The head of state said the government has launched the Presidential Innovation Award to recognize the most promising innovations during the Jamhuri Day celebrations. He observed that this year's edition will consider submissions from all counties covering food security and agriculture, digital transformation, healthcare, entertainment and gaming, climate action and green energy. We're also expanding the use of technology into our education. As I said, ICT hubs will come in handy. We are also expanding the use of technology and innovation into our agriculture. For the first time this year, we delivered fertilizer using a digital platform. Experimentation. Now, I have learned that in government, you don't experiment. You do by the book. But for us to thrive, we have to open the space in a way to be experimental. What doesn't work, we drop, but what works, we build on it. The commitment to innovation across public, private, research and academic sectors, and above all, the entrepreneurial spirit and talent of Kenya's young people. Delegates at the 2023 Kenya Innovation Week, a Commonwealth edition, are exploring innovation system's key actors, potential for growth, challenges, and existing opportunities. Alanauko, Prime Edition. Now, two days after the National Dialogue Committee presented its report, Azimio La Umojawan, Kenya Party leader Raila Odinga, is now saying that he will give his opinion on the National Dialogue Committee's report this Thursday, that's three days from today, after a meeting with the Azimio leadership, including the coalition's parliamentary group. Raila said that members of the Azimio coalition party will study the report before making a resolution. He made those remarks in Nyamira and Kisumu counties where he presided over the Orange Democratic Movement's membership drive. <laughs> Imekoma kakoo, imekataa kutayamuka kwa tumbo. 
Si unaona hiyo? Bado mpaka hii mwaka moja sasa bado wanalaumu tu ile serikali ambayo ilitoka. Oh sisi tulipata nyungu ambayo ilikuwa iko tupu. Kulikuwa hakuna chochote. Eh hata hata nini vipande vipande kulikuwa hakuna. Hata ukoko ilikwisha. Sasa walianza hiyo mwaka jana mwezi wa, wa tisa sisi tuko mwaka hii mwezi wa kumi na moja bado wanalaumu uhuru. Si wameshindwa? Na kwenda kukopa pesa ya kulipa us, kulipa uh, deni. Tuko na deni anakwenda kuchukua deni nyingine ile lipi ile deni mkongwe. Hiyo na kaza kazi bure kabisa. We huko ndani ya shimo unazidi kushimba. Huko kule ndani ya shimo unashimba kaburi yako. On to an item here on employment now. The Ministry of Labor says that it has not received any complaint by employees from either Ashton Apparel EPZ or Mombasa Apparel EPZ Limited of termination of the, uh, their employment contract. Appearing before the Senate Committee on Labor and Social Protection to explain the government's position on the plight of workers from the two companies, Labor and Skills Development Principal Secretary Shadrach Mwadime said that the employees whose employment contract had been terminated were paid their, en their entitlements as per the law. Close to 8,000 employees of the two companies will lose their jobs when the entities close down on the 23rd of December. That's just two days before Christmas and they allege a plot by their employers to deny them their dues. Tilio Marco with that report. That stipulate contract service to be a period or a number of working days which amounts in the aggregate to equivalent of three or more month, I mean three months or more. Notice of redundancy was received on the 22nd of November 2023, which informed the county labor office that both Ashton Apparel and Mombasa Apparel will be closing business on 23rd of December 2023. The notice indicated they will be paid salary due, accrued, accrued leave days, notice in lieu. Let's now move into family matters. Now 19 counties in Kenya have a low contraceptive prevalence rate in line with the Kenya Vision 2030. According to the Population Service Chief Executive Officer, Margaret Njenga, this is a result of cultural beliefs illiteracy levels as well as poverty speaking during a family planning conference she called on government to strengthen its approach and increase access to end the use of modern contraceptives in kenya currently close to 59 percent of married women are using modern contraceptives kasi chana masha is that report Gains in family planning uptake have been considerable, with the 2018 modern contraceptive prevalence rate among its married women close to 59%, exceeding Kenya's family planning 2020 target of 58.3%. As a country, we are doing well. Um, the, the last KDHS report showed that we are on track, doing well as a country globally. But when you break it down by counties, then you begin to see that there's a problem. Despite the gains, a few counties still have a low contraceptive prevalence rate as a result of poverty, illiteracy and cultural beliefs. Our levels of knowledge still remains uh, very low, uh, especially in rural uh, areas. There's also stock out of family planning commodities in different parts uh, of the country. Therefore, the supply chain system also needs uh, to be strengthened. Uh, uh, an issue of cultural hindrances and especially again in the counties uh, which are are dominated by uh, strong cultural beliefs and religious beliefs and therefore there is need to engage on cultural leaders 
The Ministry of Health, in partnership with various stakeholders, kicked off a family planning campaign in 2019, dumped DESIP, delivering equitable and sustainable increases in family planning program across 19 counties, among them Wajia, Garissa, Mandera, Samburu, Isiolo, Marsabit, Kilifi, Lamu, Kuala, Tana River, Mombasa, Baringo, Narok, Kajiado, West Pokot, Elgeo, Marakwet, Turkana, Migori, and Homa Bay. However, the government has been urged to increase access to and use of modern contraceptives across Kenya while increasing equity and sustainability with a particular focus on adolescents, people living with disability and poor rural women. In buying food or buying contraception, therefore the government needs to step in and fully support so that um, uh, households are more economically empowered and uh, this challenge is taken uh, away from them. Is to standardize and to take approaches that meet these counties and are not doing very well according to the latest data and make them come up so that they are also looking like the national average. Otherwise, Prime Edition. Well, that family planning uptake story brings us to our first break. Coming up, we dive deeper into the second part of this live broadcast. Stay with us. School fees in homes, Chana. I'm a Malizwa. Loto Moto. May the Almighty God bless you. Keep on doing the right thing. Cheza Loto Moto. Shinda Pesa Moto Moto. It's a cocktail of emotions. The puns that cracks up the family. <laughs> Greed that yields power and a hunger for success. <laughs> Trends turn to falls. Survival for the fittest is the drive. Who are we blackmailing? But nothing beats the feud in a family where one disappears and another fights for the crown. It was not supposed to go this far. It's the desire to succeed that keeps us going, the deception that keeps us digging, and the love to peel that keeps us living. Kumasa is one of the eight regional economic communities recognized by the African Union and has a membership of 21 member states with a population of over 600 million people. It covers quite a wide area, ranging from membership from as far north as Tunisia and as far south as Eswatini. Comesa's mission is to make trade easier. Its headland projects, programs, and initiatives focus on four types of integration. Watch the Comesa Briefly documentary on Thursday, the 30th of November at 6.30 p.m. on KBC Channel 1. Welcome back. Our sign language interpreter, of course, is Anne Wangeshi and our socials at KBC Channel 1. Let's swing to the proceedings of the Senate where the Senate Committee on Roads and Transportation has fined Kajiado County Governor Joseph Olelenku half a million shillings, that's 500,000 shillings, for not honoring committee summons. The governor had been summoned over a petition on access to title deeds for properties brought at Jami Bora Estate, that's in Kisaju, in Kajiado County, but he failed to show up. Now, the senators have now issued a second summon for Governor Lenku to appear three days from today on Thursday. We decided to invite the governor, who appeared once, but the information that the governor gave was not helping the committee in doing its work. So we wrote to the governor severally, telling him to provide that information. We wrote reminders to the governor of Kajiado, but it was not forthcoming. So the committee decided to summon the governor. And those are the powers given to this committee, that a governor can be summoned by the committee to appear in person as a witness. So I think the governor of Kajiado is holding the Senate in contempt. He does not take the Senate with the seriousness that uh, uh, it deserves. So the committee, having deliberated, we have invoked section 19.1 of the Parliamentary Powers and Privileges Act that says 
if a governor or if any witness does not appear before the committee, he can be either fined to an amount that is not exceeding half a million or arrested and brought to this committee. Governor Lelenku there holding the Senate in contempt, according to Kiambu Senator. But uh, female genital mutilation prevalence rates in Kenya have dropped from 23% all the way down to 15%. This is according to statistics from the Kenya Demographic Health Survey. The report comes as civil society organizations in Africa convene during the 16 days of activism to strengthen collaboration geared towards eradicating FGM by 2030. As part of the 16 days of activism national campaign, different non-governmental organizations are meeting in Naivasha, Kenya, calling to action the need to implement different legislative policies to enable the achievement of eradication of female genital mutilation by 2030. The time to act is now, and our collective efforts will script a brighter future for women and girls in Kenya, as well as in those countries we are working and supporting Somaliland, Ethiopia, and Senegal. Much, much as Kenya has outlawed these practices, there is scanty evidence of the effectiveness of relevant re re legislations. Community attachment to culture at the expense of children's well-being continues to make children more and more vulnerable. According to the Kenya Demographic Health Survey, the statistics in Kenya indicate a drop in FGM prevalence rates. According to the recently released data by the KDHS, we have seen a reduction and now we are at 15 uh, percent in the last um, survey we were at 23 so you can see there's a reduction in the context of kenya's commitment to ending violence against women and girls including fgmc by 2030 the role of government agencies is pivotal since they implement various strategies male involvement also takes a center stage in our programming we work with various stakeholders to promote proven approaches to combating fgm with kenya being a signatory to ratified international conventions civil society organizations continue to push for a commitment to end the practice ending fgmc will require an integrated multi-sectoral approach that addresses the different intersecting vulnerabilities facing girls and women affected or at risk of FGMC. Across the borders, uh, we work with the neighboring countries, and I want to cite, for example, uh, uh, where Kenya borders Tanzania, and we know very well that Korea, uh, there is still a lot of FGM practiced in Korea. We have supported uh, working together collaboratively with other CSOs. We have trained men because we know that if we continue doing the same thing in terms of uh, uh, approaches towards ending FGM and child marriage, we will not uh, get different results and civil society organizations further support the move to amend the prohibition of FGM Act to facilitate implementation. The sobering statistics from the Kenya Demographic Health Survey are a wake-up call to not only Kenya but also its neighbors whose prevalence rates are also high which include Senegal, Ethiopia and Somalia. Serafina Robi for Prime Edition from Naivasha. Let's go back to a story we highlighted earlier for you parents of Kitangela International School in Kajiado County and Set Greenhill Academy in Kisi County have sued the Attorney General, Kenya National Examination Council and the Cabinet Secretary Education over the recently released 2030, 2023 rather, Kenya Certificate of Primary Education results. In a petition filed at the Milimani Court, the aggrieved parties through their lawyers want the court to issue orders stopping the Kenya National Examination Council from conducting Form 1 placements and instead to mark the examination afresh. Their prayers come amid admission by the Kenya National Examination Council that the results of 133 candidates right across the country had errors. 
A day after displeased candidates and parents of Kitengele International School in Kajiado County camped at the Kenyan National Examination Council's Mitiania headquarters over irregular marking of the KCP examination, they have sought legal action at the Milimani High Court. The mutilation and the adulteration of the KCP exam results for pupils and the kids of this country is very worried because these are the future leaders. In the petition, they express dissatisfaction with the marking of the 2023 KCP examination, adding that the results have caused their children mental stress. I would like to ask the government, are you taxing our parents if the ballot papers can be counted, why not our parents? We had very high expectations in our examination, knowing that we are going to talk in Yansa region. But then when the results came out, we were more than devastating. It's beyond expectation. We know that those want our marks. According to the parents, if the Form 1 placement exercise proceeds, then the 30-day appeal period will be invalid. We as parents, we know the capacity and the abilities of our children. We have walked with the children since they were born, since they started school. We know what they were capable of doing. It is a horrid calamity. We can check it just like the first and second world war. Because when an attack is an attack on vulnerable children who are defenseless, Several parents and students have expressed dissatisfaction with the results released by CS Education Ezekiel Machogu on Thursday, November 2023. Kenya National Examination Council had early admitted irregularities in the process, saying it had received a piece over some errors in the results obtained through the short code 454 that was provided by the Ministry of Education. <laughs> Azimio la Umoja wa Kenya Alliance leader Raila Odinga has also weighed in on the matter questioning the credibility of the exam. The Anglican Church Archbishop Jackson Ole Sapit has also called on NEC to own up to mistakes. Uh, tuna uh, endelea uh, kupokea hisia mbalimbali uh, kupitia mtiani ambayo imetoka ya darasa la nane hivi uh, majusi na uh, tumeona uh, wa Kenya wakilalamika Eh, kwamba labda kuna mambo ambayo haijaenda sawa sawa. Meanwhile teachers and parents in Kakamega County want fairness in the form 1 selection process. The students chose their schools for the coming selection. Let the selection favor the child as by the, uh, the, the way the child chose. Solidarity the debate over the exam comes even as the government is hard to employ teachers, especially those that have already practiced in junior secondary school. It was uh, said by the Presidential Working Party on Education that no teacher should serve for more than two years, as an, uh, for more than one year as an intern. So kindly, I would like the government to look upon that issue, especially the CS for Education, Machogu, to work in harmony with the Minister of Education and make sure, and TSC, and make sure that these teachers are confirmed. Ruth Wamboy reporting for Prime Edition. School fees in Totem and Ipua, but in bad with Nata Quendele, throughout. Lotomoto imekuja kwa maisha yetu when I needed it the most. That is all I can say for now. I'm so grateful. May God bless you. Cheza Lotomoto, Shinda Pesa Moto Moto. KBC Channel One magazine programs strive to disseminate news and information. Welcome to happening in the world of entertainment and achievements of individuals navigating through life. Be part of the intelligent conversation of a KBC Channel One related to the interest of Kenyan public on various subjects of national importance. Asigaribu tujifunze. Keeping you up to date with the latest tech news, challenges, and remarkable stories of individuals with disabilities. 
have a say. Our magazine programs empower communities with words for conversations and a common language to approach the world. For your infotainment needs, we have a great range of programs. The stage is set for a showcase of young talents as Kenya hosts the Sekafa Under-18 Championship from the 25th of November to 8th of December in Kisumu and Kakamega. Kenya, Sudan, Rwanda, Somalia, Zanzibar, South Sudan and Uganda are battling for the title in the two-week tournament. The group face matches are scheduled 25th of November to 1st of December. Then the semi-finals will be played on 5th of December and the final on 8th of December, all in Kisumu. Catch the matches live on KBC Channel 1, your true sports partner. Wairi Mojanga is coming a little later on with the day's business, uh, but first, men, those men in Samburu County, they have been urged to break the silence on gender-based violence on the domestic front. Samburu County Chief Gender Officer is saying that male participation is key to breaking the cycle of violence in society. Here is our county news roundup. Data from the Ministry of Health indicates that one out of seven men is a victim of gender-based violence, yet a majority opt to remain silent when the unfortunate happens. Samburu County government has rolled out an anti-GBV program targeting the male population as part of the 16 days of activism against a gender-based violence campaign. <laughs> Elsewhere, civil societies and human rights activists in Kembu County held a peaceful demonstration to condemn an act of violence allegedly perpetrated by Kameno Ward MCAP Tamburo against his nominated counterpart Pacifica Onyanche in Naivasha Nakuru County last Friday during a meeting with Kembu Governor Kimani Wamatangi. Every other day, let us continue saying we, we are not giving anyone any opportunity to create excuses so we call other organizations to stand with us as we continue calling out this injustice meanwhile kakamega county has launched a vaccination program for healthcare workers to minimize the spread of the influenza virus healthcare workers eh? we do not want to come and uh, pick the disease from our patients take it home to our relatives or pick it from our relatives and bring it to our patients. At the same time, farmers in Kericho County are to benefit from a six maize dryers. Heat dryer in a dry 160 parts per two hours. Crop Development Principal Secretary Dr. Paul Rono further directed Kefis and the Kenya Seed Company to deploy seed inspectors to agrovets and seed outlets to weed out unscrupulous dealers dealing in fake seeds. Finally, the Chamber of Commerce, Hoteliers and Bar Owners in Meru County have asked the County Assembly of Meru to reject in its entirety the proposed Alcoholics Drink Control Bill of 2023 refused the bill in totality the fact being that uh, actually it's very preliminary and basic compared to our advanced acts that was passed and amended in 2017 they termed the proposed law as punitive and retrogressive regina manyara reporting for prime edition now, do you remember Nairobi Governor Johnson Sakaja's personal assistant, Osman Khalif, who had been missing for 17 days? He has been found. When the matter came up for directions on Monday before Justice Chachamwita, the family's lawyer told the court that he was found and taken to hospital for a checkup and he's recuperating at home. When the matter came up to confirm compliance, the court was told that Khalif is now a free man. But now he's actually, uh, he was discharged and he's at home as we speak. So he's safe and sound as, as we speak. He's not in custody, he's not, uh, 
in any captivity as we speak. However, the family lawyer has requested for more time to seek direction, saying they want the investigations to continue to know the abductors and what was their motive. Mr. Jeff is telling me that's the correct way to call me. Is that right? It's a Chris from attending court from now. We are not going to decide on the way forward. This matter will be mentioned on the 6th of December for further directions. This is as the Office of the Inspector General of Police and the DCI Office called for the termination of the case. This comes barely a week after the court ordered the police to move fast and arrest the alleged abductors. Elsewhere, the hearing of the Coalition of Political Parties continued before a three-bench judge led by Justice Jaira Ngaya with Kenya Kwanzaa councils calling for the dismissal of the petition, citing that it should be referred to political parties' tribunal. We have highlighted the specific political disputes that would have otherwise required that they be referred to the political tribunal Lord, under sections 40 and 41. Lord, it remains our position that this court was not the first court of call in respect of those political disputes. And the minority in parliament determined how, when, and who determines this. Those are not issues that can be brought under a tribunal such as the political party tribunal. Why, my lord? Because that question deals with the sovereignty of the people. In the case, Azimio Laumoja Coalition Party and the Kenya Kwanza are fighting over majority membership in the National Assembly. Our role on the preliminary objections on 26th of January 2024. The three bench judge led by Justice Jaras Ngaya, John Njigiti and Lawrence Mugambi will now retire to deliberate on the matter and give his decision on the 26th of January, the year 2024. Michael Mondiga for Prime Edition. He served as the Minister for East African Affairs, Health and Lands. This week on the Cabinet, we focus on Peter Otieno Nyakiamo, who served during President Moy's administration. Peter Cleaver Zotieno Nyakiamo was born in Kaksingri along the shores of Lake Victoria. He attended local schools where he honed his leadership qualities in 1946, he sat his final exam at Mangu High School and was set to join Makerere University in Uganda, an institution of choice and prestige in East and Central Africa at the time, to train as a teacher. But this did not happen because a bank job opportunity came knocking and he grabbed it. In 1956, Nyakiamo was sent for training in England. At that time, he was earning 100 shillings in monthly salary. Due to his sterling performance, Nyakiyama was promoted to general manager overseeing Barclays Bank in Kenya until his retirement in June 1982. He was approached by a section of Mbita constituents and leaders from Kaksingri to vie for the parliamentary seat then held by Alphonse Okuku, the brother to Tom Boyer. He decided to take up the challenge. However, he faced an immediate dilemma as his father and Boyer's father were family friends and his mother and Boyer's mother were relatives from the Wakula clan. Nyakiamo's father was also Mboya's godfather. During the 1983 snap elections, Nyakiamo won by a landslide. President Moy appointed him the Minister for East African Affairs. He held the position for one and a half years before a transfer to the Ministry of Health, where he worked for two years before being moved to the Ministry of Lands for another two years. One of his big achievements was a multi-billion shilling medical deal between the Kenyan and Danish governments for the latter to supply medical kits to all hospitals and health facilities in the country. Another was the introduction of a private wing at Kenyatta National Hospital to cater for patients who could afford to pay extra for specialized treatment, as was the case in private hospitals in Nairobi and other towns. In the 1992 general election, he lost his parliamentary seat. Nyakiamo is remembered for increasing and expanding educational and health facilities in Mbita constituency. 
Moisindo Girls Secondary School was the first to be set up with 30 students that has since increased to 800. As the Minister for Health, he also influenced the upgrading and refurbishing of Mbita Health Centre, now renamed Suba County Referral Hospital, and initiated dispensaries on Fangano and Rosinga Islands. He also led a serious campaign to have his Suba sub-tribe recognised and a district for it carved out of Homa Bay District. He serves as a trustee of the National Fund for the Disabled of Kenya. Jackie Wambiru, The Cabinet. We've gone ahead to come and a school fees with your other kid. Thank you, God. Sad to sign a lot of moto. Cheza loto moto. Shinda pesa moto moto. In a world filled with uncertainty, there is one thing we can always count on the power of compassion and generosity. Every day, families in Kenya face unimaginable challenges and hardships. They struggle to put food on the table, provide shelter for their loved ones, and access basic health care. But today, you have the power to make a difference. By just contributing one shilling and fifty cents from your airtime, your generosity can provide access to sanitary pads, nutritious food, clean water, education, and life-saving medical care to those who need it most. To support this cause, please tune in to your favorite radio station under the KBC umbrella for step-by-step -step instructions on how to subscribe. KBC Helping Hands. Together, we can make a difference and bring hope to those in need. Well, thank you for staying with us. Let us now look at the business news of the day. My name is Oiri Mujenga. The National Treasury has rolled out a privatization program that will start with 11 state entities in efforts to raise money, reduce, reduce reliance on exchequer funding and improve efficiency. The privatization exercise that will see, among others, the Kenyatta International Convention Center, the Kenya Pipeline Company and the new KCC privatized is expected to inject capital expertise as well as a new capital investment to, for the institution rather to effectively compete. The government has finalized plans to privatize 35 parastatals with 100 others still under consideration. And on Monday, the National Treasury released a privatization program targeting 11 state-owned enterprises. Among those targeted for privatization include the iconic Kenyatta International Convention Center and the Kenya Literature Bureau, which the government described as profitable and needs to be incorporated into limited companies. The National Oil Corporation of Kenya is also said to be sold, with the National Treasury saying its new owners need to restructure its operation to return it to profitability. Other parastatals such as the Numerical Machining Complex, Kenya Vehicle Manufacturers Limited, and Rivertex East Africa Limited have been described as loss-making and need capital injection as well as expertise to revamp their operations. Kenya Pipeline Company, Kenya Seed Company, Moya Rice Mills, Western Kenya Rice Mills Limited, and the new KCC are the other parastatals said to be privatized. The privatization exercise comes a month after the privatization bill was signed into law, removing a requirement for Parliament to approve privatization of any state entity. Benson Ruba reporting for Prime Edition. Now, the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa member states plan to start facing out roaming rates from March next year. This is after Comesa has secured funding to kickstart the process that will offer residents lower calling rates. 
the common market for Eastern and Southern Africa has secured 1.3 billion shillings to create regulatory frameworks for facing out roaming charges. The aim is uh, to have harmonized uh, roaming charges or to reduce them, to, uh, to take them to zero. So that when you are moving from one country to country, the costs of making a call is, uh, is lower. Reducing the regional interconnection calling rates have been on the cards for over a decade with actualization of the reduced tariffs set for March next year. Most of the East African partner states, that is uh, Kenya, Uganda, Rwanda and, and uh, South Sudan, we have been implementing. And already now we have, Tanzania is now ready to implement. They have actually started implementing. Comesa says 29 countries have committed to ratify the regulatory policies that will guide and harmonize roaming charges. We are trying to now implement a, a uniform uh, roaming regulation across the SADC region, but now it's been expanded to cover the whole tripartite region, which will be beneficial. If you go to any country, we are hoping that you will be able to get less um, roaming charges compared to what is pertaining now. Abolishing roaming charges is among factors that are expected to drive up intra-African trade by $9.2 billion annually within five years. Benson Ryoba reporting for Prime Edition. Now, the private sector in Kenya should partner with international firms to invest in special economic zones to create wealth and jobs. This emerged during a public participation by the Special Economic Zone Authority on new amendments, as our reporter John Jacob Curia narrates. To respond to legal and operational deficiencies, the Special Economic Zones Authority is consulting members of the public on 19 proposed amendments to its parent act. Among the amendments is a clause targeting to woo the private sector, considered the key driver of the Special Economic Zones to invest in eight Special Economic Zones in Kenya. In this country we have, of course, a huge uh, unemployment issue. The SEZ program really is intended to try not only the industrialization but to, do, to be able to also to give us solution to the problem of unemployment which is massive okay for this reason um, the programs have been set up with a lot of incentive being given to foreign uh, foreign direct investment as well as uh, domestic direct investment with a view to create industries that can access both local market and international market. Special Economic Zones Authority CEO Kennedy Chalule is challenging the private sector to partner with international firms and invest in the special economic zones that are expected to operate optimally within two years of being established. In Tangernet, which is, a, I would say, is the flagship of Africa, the SEZ contributes between 10 and 13% to the GDP. I'm sure you are all aware that as a country, our manufacturing contribution to GDP today, as we speak, is around 7.2. Okay? So imagine if we were to perform like Benjamin and add 13%, so the, our economy will be doing to over 20%. That is the potential of the SEZ. Farms investing in special economic zones benefit from tax incentives, as well as key infrastructure such as railway, electricity connection, and port to facilitate production and export of the products. One of the things that Kenyan must know is that this country today, as we speak, is 92% renewable energy. For that reason, we are a good candidate for green manufacturing. So investors from outside are coming to this country to take advantage of green manufacturing, which is available in our zones. That comes with a lot of incentives globally. There's a lot of funding into that sector. The Special Economic Zones Authority will hold the next public participation exercise on the new amendments in Nyeri this Friday, followed by Nairobi next week. John Jacob Curia, Prime Edition. The Tourism and Wildlife Ministry is in the process of identifying and mapping out the various tourism attractions across all the 47 counties for targeted marketing. Tourism Principal Secretary, that is John Ololtua, says that the government will promote the tourist products in collaboration with county governments. Kenya, which is targeting to attract 5.5 million visitors annually by the year 2027, has now embarked on a journey to improve the country's tourism products. We have already linked up to the county governments through the Council of Governors 
to be able to look at the 47 counties in Kenya and identify the unique attractions that they have. So that once we identify, one, we develop them. If they require infrastructure, if they require electricity, if they require water, so that they can be accessed, then we'll do that. Ololtua says the government will improve infrastructure in key tourist sites in order to improve their accessibility. We are going to start with you, we are going to help you. I think as a stakeholders, we had our first meeting as stakeholders and we agreed that we are going to form Mombasa uh, Tourism Board. That is where now all the stakeholders from County 001 will sit down on a quarterly basis and see how we can move this Mombasa and becomes a, Mombasa, it becomes a tourist hub. Speaking during the rebranding of Pride Inn hotels, resorts and camps to a luxury chain, Nurani announced plans to open up 10 more hotels under the franchise. Along with the new face and the new look, we have already earmarked 10 counties where we want to expand towards. We are very excited, very optimistic about the future of tourism in this beautiful country, Kenya. The chain now has 900 rooms and conference facilities with a capacity to host 15,000 guests. We started off as a budget brand, but over time, with the market dynamics, having learned what our clients wanted, we invested heavily in training, we invested heavily in modernizing our hotels to bring in the luxury status. And as we stand today, we are very proud that Pride Inn has a new face. Kenya received an estimated 1.5 million international visitors last year. Investment, Trade and Industry Cabinet Secretary Rebecca Miano says she will focus on 10 issues during her tenure at the helm of the ministry. Value addition and agro-processing with special emphasis on textiles and leather as well as implementation of the one-stop investment centre, local and export warehouses and warehouse receipt system are among her agenda as Trevor Ngendo now narrates. Slightly over a month after taking over the Ministry of Investment, Trade and Industry from her predecessor Moses Kuria, Rebecca Miano on Monday held the inaugural meeting with the ministry staff. Here she outlined 10 strategic deliverables she plans to focus on during her tenure at the ministry. Top on the agenda is facilitation of domestic and foreign investments, development of special economic zones, export processing zones, industrial parks and county aggregation industrial parks, as well as enhancing market access for Kenyan products. We have a mandate to improve Kenya and the livelihood of Kenyans in simple words. And we will do that by ensuring an environment where the country can produce what it needs sufficiently for using in the local market and having leftovers to export to other countries. She also plans to focus on enhancing value addition and agro-processing, combat counterfeiting, grow manufacturing, implement a one-stop investment center, roll out of Nairobi International Finance Center and implement the local content policy. That means bringing foreign exchange to this country more importantly, creating jobs for the thousands of the jobless people we have, especially the youth, and also Pesa Mfukoni for everybody. Miano says she will focus on improving efficiency in all semi-autonomous government agencies. Trevor Ngendo for Prime Edition. Well, that marks the end of business news tonight. On the other end of the studio, we have Daniel Wahome with the day's sports. My name is Wairi Mujenga. Have a good night and see you tomorrow. From the dawn of independence to the present day, Kenya has journeyed with strength and determination. We celebrate Kenya at 60 
As we mark this incredible milestone, KBC and Jamboree present an unforgettable celebration of culture, music, and awareness. Immerse yourself in a musical journey featuring global sensations like the mighty Itols and Everton Blender. All the way from Kingston, Jamaica, along with our incredible homegrown artists. But it's not just about the music. Join us for a day of cancer awareness with free cancer screenings. In addition, we will have a fun-filled family day, including horse riding, bouncing castles for the kids, and a special tree planting exercise. Save the dates as we tour a county near you. Ticket information is available on our social media handles at Jamboree Festival KRE. Join the celebration, feel the rhythm, and make memories that will last a lifetime. Happy birthday, Kenya! A very good evening to you. My name is Daniel Wahome and welcome to Prime Edition Sports. And we start with Deaf Athletics where Tom Isaac led compatriots George Wawero and Edwin Terrer to a podium sweep in a men's 400 meters final on day one of the second edition of the Africa Deaf Athletics Championships which commenced today at the Kasarani Stadium. The four-day event has attracted seven countries from the continent. Kenyan Tom Isaac clinched the 400 meters main title after registering a base time of 49 minutes 50 seconds. George Wawero was second after clinching a time of 51 minutes 65 seconds. Edwin Terrell was third in a time of 52 minutes 49 seconds. Algerian Diloldin Abdella was fourth while Moroccans Sahuil and Imad finished fifth and sixth respectively. We, we prepared this, uh, we had a, a, a training camp with our coaches. Uh, that have improved a little bit before I was just low, but now I've improved because we have good coaches. But I hope uh, going forward with the training, uh, more training, then I will going to add more from what I have done today. The uh, championship, I believe I'll, I'll back it next year, maybe to add a championship just like uh, uh, in the Olympics and maybe to be successful and to make Kenyan proud. In the Olympics, uh, I failed to qualify for the Olympic last time, but now I believe I'm going to make it. I made it to African Championship. The winners of the championship will represent Kenya in the next year's World Championship. The event has attracted seven countries and will come to a close on Thursday. For Prime Edition, I'm Sila Onyango. Thank you, Sila Onyango, for that story, and she's on the beat for the Africa Dev athletics championships taking place in Nairobi. Now moving on is that the national swimming team that took part in the just concluded eighth African Aquatic Zone 3 championships in Kigali, Rwanda, jetted back home last night. Kenya finished third with 60 medals comprising 9 gold, 28 silver and 23 bronze. The Kenyan team comprising that six swimmers finished third behind Uganda and Tanzania who took the first podium positions. Host Rwanda finished fourth with 21 medals. I think it's such a, a good indication of how hard our swimmers are working. Everyone is training so hard and so consistently and the work is paying off because we're doing so well. We had so many swimmers meddling and Everybody was PBing and it was, it was a really good event. It was phenomenal uh, having gone back under the flag, having been welcomed back by Africa Aquatics and having done what we did, it was just phenomenal for all the swimmers. Team coach Peter Mwangangi hailed the Kenyan swimmers for their stellar performance in the regional championship. Changes have been undergoing, we are changing a lot of aspects more so during the trainings. Uh, we are also focusing on diet of the swimmers and the dry land training which we've not been taking it seriously but this time around we are doing our dry land uh, we have um, 
are qualified uh, nutritionists who is taking the aspects and the nutrition of the uh, athletes. Getting uh, 28, 23 medals and 9 goals, that is a very, very big win. Very big win. In fact, it's a very major win, especially for people who have not been uh, in competition for so long. The team performed very well. We're not able to go with the full team as we'd have wanted, but despite that, we're able to emerge with a uh, position three. We had several gold medals and uh, uh, a lot of other medals, and a lot of the athletes got personal bests. And I think, as an athlete, you're aware that what we're always looking for is a personal best in a major competition. The Kenyan team will now shift focus to African Junior Championship, slated for that to 6th of December in Mauritius, and the World Swimming Championships set for February next year in Doha, Qatar. Kigali uh, was an eye opener to most of our swimmers, especially the first timers, who we are able to beat all the odds and uh, get their best times. And um, it's a motivation to our swimmers to keep working hard and training as much as possible so that they can uh, proceed to other international galas. For Prime Edition Sports, I'm Daniel Mwendo. Now moving on is that the national soccer team, the Junior Stars, will face Rwanda tomorrow in their second Group A match of the ongoing Sekafa Under-18 Boys Championships at the Jomo Kenyatta Stadium in Kisumu City. In another match, Somalia will take on Sudan at the same venue. The matches will be live on KBC Channel 1 and Y254 and also our KBC Radio Family. The Junior Stars will take on second place to Rwanda in the second match of Group A at Jomo Kenyatta Stadium in Kisumu. <laughs> Rwanda defeated Somalia 1-0 in the opening match of the CAF and 18 Boys Championship at the second in the group with three points. Babu Chargers started their Sekafa and 18 Boys Championship with an impressive 5-0 win over Sudan on Saturday. Karyuke! Karyuke! Kenya now leads Group A with three points ahead of Rwanda on goal difference. Kibe! In another match, Somalia will face Sudan on Tuesday at the Jomo Kenyatta Stadium in Kisumu. Both teams lost their opening matches of the championship and will be battling to get at least a point in the group. All semi-final matches and the final will be played in Kisumu. The matches will be televised live on KBC Channel 1 and Y254. For Prime Edition, I'm Sila Onyango. Bright and early, 12 p.m., Kenya versus Rwanda. It's going to be live on KBC Channel 1. And uh, Rwanda versus, uh, uh, rather, S Somalia match is on Y254. Let's move on where the Harambe stars, uh, foreign-based players, Vivian Nasaka, Mona Halima Adam, Violet Nanjala, and Cynthia Shilwato are the latest players to link up with the national team ahead of their first leg of the 2024 Women's Africa Cup of Nations qualifying match against the mayors of Botswana on Wednesday at the New National Stadium. Starlet entered day seven of training at the Kasarani Stadium ahead of the crucial tie. Minol Botswana arrived in the country last night and will be looking for an away win to ease pressure in the return leg. The second leg will be played on Botswana, uh, in Botswana on the 5th of December. A win in the two-legged final round qualifier match would see the Harambe Starlets qualify for the Women's Africa Cup of Nations for the second time in seven years. And for Botswana, it means that they get back-to-back -back opportunities to play at the Women's Afcon. Now, Runda View and Kangemi Wazoefu were crowned champions of the ninth edition of the Team Wanyonyi Super Cup. Runda View won the girls' title after beating Nairobi Starlets 4-3 in post-match penalties after stalemate in normal time. Kangemi Wazoefu won the men's title after beating Kangemi All-Stars 5-4 in post-match penalties after playing to a two-all draw in regular time. Rundaview and Kangemi Wazoefu were crown champions of the ninth edition of the Team Wanyonyi Super Cup. Rundaview won the girls' title after beating Nairobi Starlets 4-3 in post-match penalties after still met in the normal 90 minutes. Adato, Anapiga! 
tournament here Westlands has been very consistent and the discipline that has been there has been very very high kwa hivyo mimi nataka tu kuwapongeza nyinyi Kangemi was the won the men's title after beating Kangemi All Stars 5-4 in post match penalties after playing to a 2 or draw in regular time And that's the sport for tonight. Remember, join us bright and early tomorrow at 11.50 a.m. Kenya versus Rwanda is the second match of Group A for the junior stars. Are we going to see another goal fest? We saw five on Saturday, and that is when they played against Sudan. They play against Rwanda tomorrow. Don't miss it. Remember our radio stations, Kitwek, um, Ingo FM, Radio Mayenga, Pwani FM, Minto. We'll have it all carrying it for you my name is daniel wahome have a good one over to you tom boyer thanks daniel well on behalf of the entire team i want to thank you for watching my name is tom boyer good night from nairobi kenya we'll be back tomorrow bye bye Simpoke nilipwa lakini bado tunataka kuendelea through out. Loto moto imekuja kwa maisha yetu when i needed it the most. That is all i can say for now. I'm so grateful. May God bless you. Cheza loto moto. Shinda pesa moto moto. Music can be magical. I'm